This video is all about my March and April makes for 2018. Let's jump into it. <laughs> from elizabethmadethis.com. I'm here to share lots of tips and tutorials and sewing makes and inspiration to help you sew quick, sew confidently, and sew creatively. If that's up your alley, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Today I wanted to share the things that I've been making recently in the last in the last couple months. Um, I didn't do a makes video for March or a, or a plans video for this month, so I'm just kind of mashing everybody together. To, so. Um, that's just the way that my month worked. We've started soccer and things have gotten kind of busy in my house. Um, so first, I'll start with my I'll start with my my kids stuff that I've done for them. So I found this really cute airplane fabric at Colorado Fabrics in January. So I made some pajamas for all three of my boys. Um, so you know, little little pajama bottoms and then tops, little tops. I used, for the contrast, for the contrast fabric, I used some refashioned t-shirts. This is something that I like to do because I can almost always find a, a, a t-shirt in a coordinating, in a coordinating color to whatever it is that I happen to be using for them. And a, a lot of times it's a way, it's a way for me to save money. Um, cause I think a lot of times that kids fabrics are really, really expensive. And especially if you're buying lots of different contrast fabrics. So if you can go and find a cute print and then and then cut it with a with um you know a, a an inexpensive t-shirt I mean this one was like it was like a giant man, men's xl xxl t-shirt for like a dollar at the thrift store so that that saved me a lot of a lot of time and it was it was really simple and I, and I, and I used I was able to use pretty much all of the yardage plus plus the ribbing for around around the neck for for one of the t-shirts too so that was really nice so there's that. And then I made a really sweet little dress for my daughter. She's just getting into that, that stage where like patterns, there's more patterns available to her. Um, I've been waiting for that for a while. And now she's now she's finally there. Aw. So I started, it's it's a little, it's a it's kind of it's a combination of two October patterns. Um, one of them I used for the little, the little velvet dress that I made for her a couple months ago. And then I used the, I used the top from that same dress, but then, or no, I didn't use the top from the same dress. I, I used a v-neck silhouette from, from a different pattern. And then I just, I shortened the sleeve and then made this little, this, this little sleeve hack where I, I made like a little it unties it's good so it's a, it's a two-piece sleeve and then and then it ties at, at the right there it's just about the sweetest dress ever and I think I need to I, I need to pull out one of the other one of the other prints that I have for her I have I have this really sweet one with little pandas on it I think that she would she would really love but I had some leftover of that fabric so I made her some jam pajamas too so I had just enough to make the front part of these pants and then I had a coordinating of to to do the to do um the back side of that. And this is this is my crazy jams kind of style of of pajamas. And this is something that we love to do in our house. And actually the kids really get into it. They go and they find contrast fabrics and they're like, hey, let's put this with this. And our pajamas are totally wild and crazy, but who cares? Like they're not getting out of the house. It's just something that we have fun with. And I think too, for me, it's a creative exercise to see okay how can I take this fabric that I had just a little tiny bit of and like smush it together with something else and still have it be a wearable garment that like looks kind of cool um so one of these days I will get around to doing a proper tutorial about crazy jams speaking of crazy jams I had this refashion that I did recently that I'm wearing and I'll pop in a little video so I will talk about it this started out as a pair of very boring sweatpants and they were like oatmeal colored uh and then and then this really pretty french terry sweatshirt which was really really big really big it was big it was really it was probably five sizes too big on me and 
very, very long too. So I've had it in my mind to do this kind of long sweatshirt hoodie. Um, I had an October pattern that uh, I'll pop in the description box if you want to find, if you want to read more about that one. Um, but it's like a sweatshirt dress kind of thing and it's got these big comfy cozy pockets and so forth like that but i just need to have a couple of things in my wardrobe that are just pretty much for just being around the house I'm really cold when i first wake up and so i i just want to put on something really really big and cozy and i've been resorting to wearing my husband's hoodies and i don't really want to do that anymore so the thing about these two fabrics is that they don't necessarily go together so i had a challenge in kind of putting them together so the the pink the, the the pink is kind of it's kind of a coral uh kind of orangey sort of pink it's 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 really like a, like a true salmon kind of color which is totally which is totally like the kind of pinks that i that i love to wear um and then i wanted to mash it up with aqua because i wear like aqua all the time and it's pretty much my favorite color so i took my plain oatmeal paired sweatpants and I dyed them with uh, Rit Dye, Rit Dye More, Kentucky Sky, which is, it's it's a dye that's specially for, for polyester, for synthetic fabrics. So I, I, put, I put some of that in the water and then just because I wanted a little bit more depth, I added, I added like half a capful of the daffodil yellow in this, in the same in the Rit Dye More, um, in just a couple places. I didn't agitate it at all. I just let it kind of soak into the fabric. So it kind of made a little like blue in some places, green in other places. It just made kind of a different sort of effect. But then I had these two fabrics that are kind of on opposite sides of the color wheel, so that was kind of interesting. I didn't really know what to do with it. I kind of sat on it for a while. And then I saw somebody who was who had made a t-shirt from a distressed a distressed jersey and I thought maybe I could do that so because I have so much of both of these colors in my stash I took I took a I took a stretch lace and I and I, I underlined the the green sections with the stretch lace and I underlined the the salmon color with uh, with a, a green with a with an aqua sort of uh, quilted ponte that I used for another project which you'll see in a minute um, and then I took my, before I underlined it, I took my rotary cutter and I just kind of slashed it in, in random places. And I only did this on the front. I didn't have enough fabric left over um, on the back for either of these things. So I just did it on the front and I did it on the sleeves too. So it's kind of a mishmash. I was down to my last like thread for both of these, for, from both of these garments to be able to make this. And you can see I pieced, I pieced my hood. So I'm kind of I've got that, you know, half and half hood thing going on. But it was, I mean, it was again, like my crazy jams, it's kind of an exercise in what do you have? How can you make it work? And is it gonna end up with something that's kind of like cool? My oldest son's comment about this was, did you mean to cut holes in your clothes like that, mom? Yes, I did. Why? Uh, I thought it was trendy. He thought it was very weird. He was very confused. I'm not really sure how I feel, feel about it, except I really, I like, I like the general effect. And whether it's cool or not, who knows? And honestly, I don't know that I care because it's going to stay in the house. So that's what it, that is what it's about this project. So next up is this kind of crazy sweater. This is inspired by a Burberry sweater that I saw that I thought was really, really cool. And again, I'm mixing textiles. And you can see I'm also, uh, I didn't talk about it with the, with the last, with my big hoodie, but I used the right side and the wrong side of the fabric. Um, so you can see like on this section, this is the wrong side of the French terry. And this is again, this is another refashion. So this was, this was a ready to wear sweatshirt. And I used the, the right side here, the wrong side here. And then this is actually a hand knitted sweater that one of my sewing friends gave me. Um, it was really, it was actually, it was not, it was not a sweater. It was, it was a tennis, it was a tennis dress. So it was actually a really difficult refashion. And she gave it to me for this, for the sake, for the purpose of refashioning. Um, she said, here, you can do something with this. I need it out of my house. So 
those kind of words are, are just like fire for me. I have to, I have to act on them and I'm like, okay, I need to do justice to this. So I, I took, I took the sections of it and it's, it's color black down the middle of the sleeve. And you can see this, this section is actually longer in that. And that's very much like the Burberry sweater. Um, this particular knit did not want to, to play nicely and hang down longer than that. It wanted to kind of flip up in a weird and awkward way. So instead I added, I added a decorative button in there, which I think is kind of fun. And, um, I'll, Throw in the video so you can see it a little bit better but then it kind of goes it goes down a little bit lower on on the hip and then kind of goes around to the back so it's a very funky sort of color blocked mixed textile sort of sort of sweater and i and i used i used the toaster sweater by so how seven to as my base pattern for this so so if you can see like some of some of the features of that of like the the t-neck and and all and the sleeves and whatnot, but yeah, this, this, this hack took a little bit of time. This hack took a little bit of time. So this was my practice. And then I, um, I'm pairing this one with these pink jeans, with these pink jeans. Um, I vlogged about these and, uh, they're just, they're just, they're just a basic, a, a basic skinny jeans pattern. Um, I made these because I couldn't figure out my other, my Atsu jeans, which are still, I, they're still on the shelf. I have not touched them. Um, I'm not terribly motivated to touch them right now. Um, eventually I will get back to them. But yeah, this was, this was my muslin for the, for the green, the green version, which I will put on. So this is the second version of my Burberry hack. Um, sweater. So this, what got me thinking about this particular thing was uh, Surge Fabric Shop, uh, which is an online fabric store. They were having, they were looking for, for like extra people to join their team and they said, so they had a contest in their Facebook group and I thought, hey, I'll throw my hat in the ring because they had a couple of fabrics that I wanted to try out. And uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to try out some of their fabrics. Uh, one of the, the people that I know here locally uh, does does some work for them so I thought hey I'll just I'll see what they have and what I did find was one of the cable knit uh, ponty knit the quilted knit things that I've seen on Stitch Sisters and I was so excited when I saw it on Stitch Sisters and then I went onto Higgs and Higgs website where they bought they got their lovely textured quilted cable looking uh, Ponty from and the shipping the shipping to the US was just it was just so expensive <laughs> so I was thrilled to find it not only at storage fabric but um, that it was in this this pretty minty soupy foam green which is absolutely my favorite color um, so I thought okay I'm gonna I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna use this in a different way and so I started looking about stuff and then I found the Burberry sweater and I decided to pair it with an ITY sneak print that I have just scraps of in my in my stash, and this does not have the same stretch as the as the Ponty. Usually, when you mix when you mix knit fabrics, it's a good idea to to match to mix knits that are the same weight, um, and if not the same weight, definitely the same stretch. So this Ponty has uh, this. ITY has way more stretch than the Ponty. So what I did to kind of tame that down so I could still put these two fabrics together was that I, I, I underlined this with French Terry, which had the exact same amount of stretch as the Ponty. So I've got these running tights that I also made. And this was to go, again, this was this was also, also from Surge Fabric. And this is their, den their jeggings fabric in the sky blue, if you're interested. But um, I wanted to, I wanted, I, I ordered it because I've been looking for some nice dragging fabric because I think, because it's super comfortable to wear, but it's also not the easiest thing to find. So I ordered this thinking, hey, I'll just try it out. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I think it's a little bit too lightweight to be a proper jeggings. Like I, I have some, I have some jeggings that I bought when I was pregnant and they're, they're definitely thicker. Um. But I do like this. I think it's a great weight for active wear. So that's what I decided to do with it. So I found a ready-to-wear leggings, pat, leggings um, picture. 
and and I just I used a basic leggings pattern and I just hacked it to pieces so I just so this was just a, a bunch of I just I just really eyeballed it and I knew that everything was gonna fit within the confines of my of my patterns I had already worked that out I'd already used this leggings pattern before and I just I just hacked it to pieces so it's got a lot of different color blocking bits I used the the wrong side of the fabric like here at the knee and also a little bit further up um, as you'll see in the video and then and then there's the right side of the fabric and then everything is just put together pretty much with my cover stitch um, there's a couple of little places where I wish I had gotten the construction right a little bit better but that's just me I just need some more practice with with active wear um, in general um, it's one of those things that I think your construction needs to be ultra 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 crisp and I think in general like I do a really good job with construction but there's there's always places for improvement right I mean how many of us have like so perfect like, out of the gate nobody <laughs> okay so the other thing that I'm wearing is my my sweater that I I showed in my one of my my last my last plans videos so it's the cold water creek sweater that I I found at a consignment shop years ago and it had sat in my closet, it was too big, I just needed to resize it. So I took my Lisbon cardigan and just shrunk down everything. So I shrunk down, I cut a new neckline, I cut, uh, I brought the sides in, and I brought the shoulders, I brought the shoulders in too, and just basically cut, cut new sleeves too. Um, it was a little complicated, and this is actually probably why it took me so long to get to this, because I had to disassemble the flower, because this was the embellishment. I did not do this. Like, this was how it came. So I had to disassemble the flower and then put it put it back together so that it would fit me, and then reassemble the flower, the, all the, the embellishment on that. And it turned out, it was it was really a simple project. I mean, I probably finished it in, in like 45 minutes. It was really simple, but... I don't know, sometimes those those projects that are really easy just are a brain drain and you just don't get to them forever and that's that's the case here. Um, so the last two things are a, are a pair of dresses that I made. One is a muslin for a dress that I made for Fabric Mart. So I will pop on the muslin. This is a sundress that I put together and I, I was going to make it from linen because Fabric Mart sent me this beautiful lavender linen which you'll see in a little bit but I was inspired by this Millie dress which was made from linen and what was really cool about the Millie dress was that it had this uh, kind of like raw hem sort of detail and it was it had these flounces and they were like had so much movement and then they just kind of it's very, it's really cool, and and just instantly I had this this really nice like fitted fitted bodice and and skirt, and then a lower skirt portion, um, this this very very round and full. So it's basic. So the the overall effect is a mermaid is a mermaid kind of silhouette, and it's this is just like the most fun dress ever. So I was like, I'm gonna figure out how to do this. So I, I did a mock-up of the bodice, which is here, and this is a, a an Ikea duvet that I, I had, and I liked the print, I thought it was fun. Um, I didn't really intend for it to turn into a wearable garment, but sure enough, I sure, I like this. I think it's super fun, and I will definitely keep wearing it in the summer. That I, I self-drafted a pencil skirt for the for the mid section and it's very short it's only 12 inches long because I needed to have enough space to make a circle skirt that's 12 inches long um, yeah 12 inches tall long yeah 12 inches long uh, for, the, for the lower skirt portion and then the the bodice is a bird from a bird style pattern it's like 11 2010 117 or something like that um, so it just kind of a, a it, I mean it's, it's this shape it's the shape of, of a thing and then I just made I made ties that uh, I made ties that do this <laughs> I decided the Millie dress has uh, has like an X back on it so a crossover back on there but I because I knew I was going to do it in linen eventually I kept it so that the ties would be adjustable. And then let's talk about the bottom section of this. So what I did was I, I cut 
four inch, four inch shorter bits from of the circle skirt. And they're they're all just little drapes, and they're this they're the same they're the same uh, circumference as as the, the lower skirt. So which means because it, as as it's going around, it's not going to cover all the way around the distance. So it's not a full tier each each one of these layers. You can see they're kind of at different angles and different the different lengths. And some of these I had to piece because of limited fabric, and I don't think it matters because I'm dealing with. Um, a very very busy print in this one and on the linen version I don't think it matters either um, and then I just kind of I put I put my skirt flat and then uh, just draped everything like I liked it and then I hand basted the the drapes where I wanted them to lie so they kind of just moved around like I wanted them to and then I zigzagged across the top of them so the only part where the zigzag is visible is on just a little tiny section and I actually did a better job of that on the linen version because I had I had a little bit more fabric to work with and I covered I covered up those joints a little bit better than I did on on this version but um, I love both of these so on this one I just did a rolled hem and then on my linen version you'll see I did something different so, so the very last project that I did for this month was my linen dress that I did that was um, my, the new version of my, my muslin dress that I, the flower dress. So as you can see, I, I changed this, I changed the straps up a little bit. What I discovered was that if I made this, the, the back straps a little bit longer, I could, to, could tie them in all kinds of different ways. Like I tried like a halter neck version, which shout out to Renata of Running In Style, who is the queen of the halter necks. Um, so that's not a style that I usually that I usually try, but I thought, hey, I could I could just kind of play around with these ties, and right now I have it in the X back configuration, but I've also tied it just as normal straps, and I like that too. But the biggest, this is the same. I worked, I, I put this together the same way that I did the flower dress. The only difference is how I did the hem. So the hem is all these different layers of linen and I, again it's the same like four inch four inch circle skirt kind of flounce situations you can see how how curved it is right there and I just I layered them the same way and it's just zigzagged across the top um, and that keeps the linen in place and it's all covered up except for like a very very small amount which I don't think it's in it's in matching thread so it's not really a big deal but then I took a th I, then I took a needle and I fringed all all around all all of these and all around the hem too. So all in total, there's like 12 yards of fringe in the whole dress. So it was a lot of fringing, but I love doing this on linen. Linen is one of my favorite fabrics to work with, and it, one of the, one of its natural properties besides being really cool to wear is that it it it, it likes to to fringe really easily. So I took I took a needle and I, and I just teased out those those threads and I'm going to go and add some some fray check just to make sure that everything's there. There is a, there is a stay stitch about five eighths of an inch from the raw edge of the hem with just a straight stitch. And then beyond that, I added I added a zigzag stitch just beyond the stay stitch. So the um, I'm sorry, the stay stitch is at as is at a half an inch from the raw edge. And the zigzag is at five eighths of an inch, just falling along on on my machine, all the way around all of the different flounces. You don't have to when you fringe. You don't have to put that zigzag in there. It's just a decorative thing. And I've done a lot of fringing with linen in the past, and it's just something that I like to add on there. But I love this dress. I think it's twirly. It's super fun. It's great for spring. It's just a beautiful color. And if you've not worked with linen, Go buy some now because it is an absolute joy to wear and it is a joy to work with. It's very easy to sew. It's great for beginners. It's great for anybody who just really wants to wear a lovely dress and forget about the wrinkles. Forget what they tell you about the wrinkles. If linen wrinkles, it's because it's nice. <laughs> Embrace it and love it. <laughs> If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. Happy sewing. I don't know. <laughs> it's my fun today to dress. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends.